Good morning, everyone at Glenwood. Good morning, Decimal Dog. And good morning, Mrs. Simon. Good morning. How about a little pet for Decimal? Sal and Bart for Mrs. Simon. We are here live in the IMC, and we have a special cameraman today. Cameraman, come on out here and uh, give Decimal Dog a pet. James Cohen, sixth grader from Miss Harris's room. Thank you, James, for being the cameraman. Also behind us, you can see sitting down, we have Julie Ramsberg who will give us a drum roll when we have the drawing for the winner. The lucky room is going to get some of these donuts. This will help me hold them up here. Fresh donuts, not the day old donuts. And I said some of these donuts because this one and I are going to sample one of them. It's very good. And I ought to know. This one I'll save the rest for you. Ah, that was good. Decimal said that I took too long chewing that, but I have to be polite, Decimal. I have to set a good example. Are you ready? Thanks, thanks a lot. I knew I had you here for some reason. <laughs> Are you ready, Decimal? Why not? He says that uh, he has to say some things. First of all, you never can tell who, who the winner will be. So tune in every week to get the question. Now, we won't have the drawing on television every week. But this is the way it will be every week on Friday. Mrs. Simon or someone will, will make the drawing. Also, if you're sixth graders and you get embarrassed easily when you have the wrong answer, you may want to turn the television off when we make the drawing. A decimal told me to say that. Let's see, that's why I guess we're ready to go over the questions. I'll have Mrs. Simon do that. The third grade question. A daily paper costs 20 cents. A Sunday paper costs 50 cents. What's the total cost for newspapers for the first 10 days of October? Decimal told me to remind you that he has helped me interpret the questions so that she can read them in English. He, he changed them from dog language to English. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, fourth grade, you earn one cent for each dish you wash and lose five cents for each dish you break. You made 45 cents after breaking three dishes. How many dishes did you wash? I hope they don't come to mind. He said she's doing pretty good for a principal. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, fifth grade. Sue and her younger sister Amy work together raking leaves. For every three bags of leaves that Sue fills, Amy fills two bags. This weekend they fill 15 bags all together. How many bags did Sue fill? They were busy girls, weren't they? Sixth grade. The numbers are less than 1,000, multiples of three, multiples of 100, and multiples of 150. What are the numbers? That's a mystery. All right, Decimal, are you ready? No? He wants to do something else. He, he wants to add a little festivity to the situation. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I love streamers. And he's still not ready. He said, we're ready for the drum roll. But first, we want to show you how the questions were submitted. We have a canister here. And it's up in the uh, math lab during the week. The questions were submitted and placed into this canister. Put it in the little folded papers with clips on them so that no one knows what is what. Mrs. Simon is going to mix these up, make the drawing, and we're going to find out the winner in just a moment. Ready for the drum roll. Mr. Creek, is Miss Simon here? 
That's what happens in live television. We're, tele we're televising up here. Miss Simon has a phone call. It's Mr. Gotis. Well, tell Mr. Gotis that Mr. Priest uh, is, has her occupied right now. She'll be right now. Okay. Drum roll. Winter's coming up. The donut party's at stake. Suspense increases. First, we have to get the name she's drawn. Then we have to check their answer. Okay, this is from Mrs. Watson's fourth grade class. Mrs. Watson, if they've got the right answer, they win the donut party. Okay, let's see. It says they washed 60 dishes. They broke three... Is this their answer, 45? Wash it one cents each. Let's look at the question. I see a number on there that may be good. Mr. Priest needs to interpret these mathematical equations. The question was, how many dishes did you wash? And the answer they wrote was? 60 dishes. Wash 60, wash dishes. 60 dishes. So we have a winner yeah. here. We sure do. Mrs. Watson's room, congratulations. Miss Simon and I, or one of us, will be up this afternoon with the donuts. We'll let you uh, know if you got the right answer. If you don't already know, we'll post the answers in the office and your teacher can check. Don't forget, next Monday, 8.45, Decimal Dog and Math Man Show. Tune in. Thanks for watching. Decimal Dog is going to interpret these. First, we have the third grade problem. He's reading it. All right, let's hear it, Decimal Dog. A daily paper cost 20 cents. Oh, before we go any further, I'd better say, I'd better say, he's reminding me, this is the third grade problem, and third grade teachers and students, uh, you need to pay close attention. Somebody needs to write down the details. I'll start the problem again. A daily paper cost 20 cents. A Sunday paper cost 50 cents. What is the total cost for newspapers for the first 10 days of October? Good question, Decimal. Let's have it again. He wants to repeat it. A daily paper cost 20 cents. A Sunday paper cost 50 cents. What is the total cost for newspapers for the first 10 days of October? That's the third grade question. Now, any grade uh, may want to answer the questions for their own benefit, and we'll be sure and give the answers to the teachers, but only submit the answers for your grade. Let's get the next question out, Decimal. This is the fourth grade question. Decimal's going to read it in the dog language, and now he's going to interpret it. Fourth graders, teachers, be sure to take notes, and you may want someone in your class to help you take notes on this. You earn one cent for each dish you wash and lose five cents for each dish you break. You made 45 cents after breaking three dishes. How many dishes did you wash? Another good question, Decimal. Let's repeat the fourth grade question again. You earn one cent for each dish you wash and lose five cents for each dish you break. You made 45 cents after breaking three dishes. How many dishes did you wash? There you go, fourth graders. Decimal Dog says good luck. And let's try the fifth grade question now. Fifth grade teachers, get ready. Take notes. Have someone help you if necessary. Decimal, read that fifth grade question. Don't leave out any words. Now, don't take time to count all the words, Decimal Dog. You like to... You like math too much, don't you? Well, here we go. Sue and her younger sister, Amy, work together raking leaves. For every three bags of leaves that Sue fills, Amy fills two bags. This weekend, they filled 15 bags all together. How many bags did Sue fill? Another good question. This is fifth graders. Sue and her younger sister, Amy, work together raking leaves. For every three bags of leaves that Sue fills, Amy fills two bags. This weekend, they filled 15 bags all together. How many bags did Sue fill? 
Good question for you fifth graders. Work together on it. And now we go to the big guys, the sixth graders. Whoop. Is that all there was to that decimal? Well, decimal says it's harder than it seems. Get ready, sixth grade. The numbers are less than 1,000, multiples of 3, multiples of 100, multiples of 150. What are the numbers? Here it is, one more time. The numbers are less than 1,000, multiples of 3, multiples of 100, multiples of 150. What are the numbers? Those are some great questions, Decimal Dog. And he wants me to tell you about what to do with the answers. You need to submit them to Math Man and Decimal Dog, Math Lab, 3rd Floor, Glenwood School. That's the address. You don't actually have to put an address on your entry. Just fill out the entry form like the blanks indicate and bring it up to the math lab and we'll have a place there for you to put it. Wish everybody good luck. Decimal Dog and I will come by and share the donuts with the winning class. Well, Decimal Dog says if there's enough donuts for me. Decimal, I only need a dozen. How many is a dozen? Better yet, sixth graders, how many are 12 dozen? That's what I'd like to have. This is the Math Man Decimal Dog show for this week. This week's show has been brought to you by some kids that love math. James Cohen, Jason Caulfield, Larry Moore, and J.T. Washington. Good morning, Glenwood Elementary students and staff. This is the Math Man and the Decimal Dog Show, and we've got problems. We're going to share them with you, right? Decimal, 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 what are you doing? <sighs> decimal Dog, you're supposed to finish your beverages before we go on the camera. Sometimes I don't know about your manners, Decimal. Well, Decimal, do you know what day it is? This, well, what's that on your tongue, Decimal? Let's see there, Decimal. Hmm, it looks like a green geometric figure shaped like a heart. Uh, what's that on the top of your nose? Another geometric figure. This one is a red one. Uh, this one does look like you know what day it is, that's for sure. What day is coming up, I should say. It's not today, but Valentine's Day is very soon. Is that why you put up that poster? Are you the one that put it up this morning? Did you put it up because it's Valentine's Day? Yeah. Well, tell me why. Why did you put it up this morning? Because you like to measure, and Ziggy has a big nose, and you want to measure his nose. Decimal, decimal. Uh, there go your manners again. Uh, I know he's a cartoon figure, but uh, I'm going to have Mrs. Kirk, the counselor, talk to you about your manners. Try to do better, okay, decimal? Uh, decimal, you, you want to make up, and uh, you want to... You want to give me a, oh, decimal, thank you, thank you, decimal, that was really good. Uh, you're really nice to me, decimal. Decimal must really want to be my valentine. Okay, let's, let's talk about some valentine math, decimal. This, this liquid you were drinking is in a container larger than the average person drinks from, but we could, uh, we could measure the volume in liters, milliliters, or fluid ounces, or, or, maybe parts of a quart, so we could do some volume there. We could also count our valentines. Of course, you would have to have a calculator to count yours, wouldn't you, Decimal? And, uh, and I could count mine on, on one hand. Decimal, there you go again. I don't know what I'm going to do with you, Decimal. Let's talk about some more math. How about, um, well, we could get some standard valentines, standard size, and estimate how many would fit on a sheet of paper, and then we could put them on there and, and, and count them. That's a good valentine math. We could uh, compare how many valentines we get from boys or girls to see which one sends the most. We could, or teachers, you could do this in the class. You could cut out valentines and make a graph 
of things that the kids love. For example, let me lay this down. For example, you could you could graph how many kids love dogs, how many kids love cats, and things like that. And and don't forget the real heart, the science math you can do with the real heart. Some good ideas there. Kids, we've got the problem of the week coming up. We've got a new game for this week. But first, let's talk about some mental math. That's something you're going to do in real life. Like all parts of math, mental math has tricks to it, decimal. And today we're going to talk about friendly numbers. Uh, uh, you would probably even have one friend yourself, wouldn't you, decimal? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize, Decimal. I know you have a lot of friends. Uh, you're, you're a bad influence on me, Decimal. Friendly numbers are numbers that fit together, kids. For, exa for example, 4 and 6 fit together to make a 10. And for you older students, you can find numbers that fit together that are friendly that make 100. Here's an example. Uh, back to friendly numbers that make a 10. 5 plus 7 plus 3 plus 8. If you had to do that, take the 7 and the 3, which are friendly, put them together and make a 10. 10 is a magic number in math. Don't ever forget that. All the kids that come to math lab know that. And go on and solve the problem after you get your friendly numbers together. Here's one for the older grades. 76 plus 39 plus 24. Try that. Try others like that. Your teacher can help you make some of them. You can make up some of your own that have friendly numbers. Let's get to the game now. Last week it was odd and even. I hope you had fun with that. Uh, classroom teachers, I hope you try some of these games on the board, in small groups, or with uh, one or two individuals playing as a reward. The game for this week is called Agents and Spy. And it's a game where you need to uh, capture the spy. Or in case you're the person who's the spy, you need to try to avoid the agents. And Decimal Dog and I will put the directions in your teacher's mailboxes. Have fun with it. Let's get to the problem of the week. First of all, we have a big silent bark for the last week's winners. And we hope you enjoyed your donuts. We know that Decimal and I enjoyed ours, that's for sure. Let's start right out with the third grade problem of the week. Decimal will interpret it for me. And now Decimal, the third grade problem. Now third grade teachers, get ready to take some notes, maybe have some kids help you. How many pages would you read if you read from the bottom of page 67 to the top of page 81? One more time, third graders. How many pages would you read if you read from the bottom of page 67 to the top of page 81. Good problem for the third graders. Fourth grade problem. Decimal, quite a long problem there. Fourth grade teachers get ready to take some notes and use your classroom helpers. Here's Decimal's interpretation. Don bought three records from a record club. Each record cost the same amount. Don was also charged 25 cents for each record to cover mailing costs. The total bill was 1950. How much did each record cost? All right, decimal, let's give it to him again. Don bought three records from a record club. Each record cost the same amount. Don was also charged 25 cents for each record to cover mailing costs. The total bill was $19.50. How much did each record cost? All right, let's go on to the fifth grade question. <coughs> Decimal, take it in. That's good. Fifth grade teachers, get ready to take some notes. Use your helpers. Find the three numbers. Two of the numbers sum to the third number. One of the numbers is equal to three times one of the other numbers. Now, that's all there is to it. You need to know what the word sum, S-U-M, means. Let's have it again, decimal. Find the three numbers. Two of the numbers sum to the third number. One of the numbers is equal to three times one of the other numbers. What are those three numbers? And now for the sixth grade problem. Help me with that decimal. My 
Hi, Lance Decimal. There was not much to that. You really like to tease those sixth graders, don't you? I like to pick on them. They deserve it sometimes, don't they? Well, here it is, sixth grade teachers. You're going to need a lot of chalk for this one. If you won 10 meters in dollar bills, how much money would you win? Once again, if you won 10 meters in dollar bills, how much money would you win? That's all the problem of the week, and that looks like it for another Math Man and Decimal Dog Show. I want to thank my production assistants, Melody, Noel, Aaron, and Migo Priest. And this episode was brought to you by some kids that love math, some real sweethearts in the fourth grade, Camille, Emily, Aaliyah, Julie, Therese, Vicki, and Kim. You listen for your name on next week's show. Have a good Valentine's Day. This is Math Man and Decimal Dog saying goodbye. Good morning, Glenwood. This is the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show, and we've got problems. Yes, we've got problems. We're going to share them with you. I'm the math man. This is my right arm, Decimal Dog. He sort of hangs around with me. This is our third show, and it's right before a special occasion. Decimal Dog, uh, do you notice anything about my hair? What? You don't notice anything about my hair that's different? Well, Decimal Dog, I know that it might be the same color as usual, but this hair is supposed to represent the hair that George Washington might have worn when he got all dressed up because we're right up near George Washington's birthday, our first president. Now, his wig might have looked different than mine, but our production budget only allowed us to have uh, this wig. It's the best I could do. Let's see, uh, Decimal Dog. We've got something here. Take a look at that. You know, there's uh, some stories about George Washington cutting down the cherry tree and not telling a lie, and I'm not saying those things are true, or I may be guilty of telling a lie. But I do know that you can take an ax that represents cutting down a tree, and you can do some math with that decimal. For one thing, this is pretty heavy, so there's some mass or weight to this ax. You could also measure the length or the circumference at the narrow end or the narrow part of the handle compared to the circumference at the wider part of the handle. There's lots of math in an axe. Well, we'll put this thing down here before I do some real damage with it. Let's talk about George Washington some more decimal dog. He was born in 1732 and he died in 1799. Now kids, how old was he when he died? How long has it been since he died? Why don't you make up some word problems about George Washington and use some math and share them with your classmates. Problem of the week coming up and another game. But first, we want to ask you if you're still thinking about the mental math friendly numbers. Try this one. Listen carefully. Maybe your teacher will let you answer orally. 23 plus 54 plus 7. Try to get that. I'll be quiet for just a moment. Did you get it? Try not to think about paper and pencil type work. Try not to think about putting the problem down in columns and doing your regrouping. Try to think of friendly numbers. Did you put the 23 and the 7 together? Try different problems on your level and your teacher will help you with them. Well, it's time to talk about the game of the week. The last game was Agents and Spy. That's one of our favorites. We've got one this week that will leave in your teacher's box boxes, and it's called Red or Blue. Red or Blue. It's a game where you try to eliminate your opposition. And Decimal Dog really likes to eliminate me when we play this game. Have fun with it. Well, Decimal, how about the problem of the week? That's what we're here for. A big silent bark for the winners of last week, and we really hope they enjoyed their donut party. This week, we've got some 
more problems. Now sometimes they're hard, sometimes they're not. Be ready. Here's the third grade problem and decimal dog will have to interpret this from dog language. Now decimal. Here it is, third graders. Teachers, be sure you take note of this. What was the score? The sum of the scores is 8. The difference is 6. The product is 7. Now there's some key words in there. You need to know the, the meaning of sum, difference, and product. And that sum is S-U-M. Here it is once again, decimal. What was the score? The sum of the scores is 8. The difference is 6. The product is 7. What was the score? Good problem for the third graders. Let's get the fourth grade problem now. Decimal, see what you can make out of that. Decimal says that you, fourth graders, better get this one this week. He knows you can do it. Here's the problem. A daily paper costs 20 cents. A Sunday paper costs 75 cents. Find the total cost of the daily and Sunday papers for the first 15 days of October. Here it is once again. A daily paper costs 20 cents. A Sunday paper costs 75 cents. Find the total cost of the daily and Sunday papers for the first 15 days of October. That's it for the fourth graders. Good luck with your problem. Decimal, what about the fifth graders? Decimal says you fifth graders have a tough one this week. Be ready. Here you go, fifth graders, teachers. Be ready to take some notes. A penny weighs about three grams. A nickel weighs about five grams. About how much more does ten dollars in pennies weigh than ten dollars in nickels? Take careful notes. I'm going to read it one more time. A penny weighs about three grams. A nickel weighs about five grams. About how much more does ten dollars in pennies weigh than ten dollars in nickels? There's the problem for the fifth graders. And the last one for the sixth graders. Are you ready, sixth graders? Got all your crayons out? No, I'm just kidding, sixth graders. Decimal dog put me up to say that. Decimal, let's give them their problem. What is the greatest amount of money you could leave for a tip if, now listen to this, no paper money is left. With the coins that are left, change cannot be made for a quarter or for a dollar. One more time. What is the greatest amount of money you could leave for a tip if no paper money is left? With the coins that are left, change cannot be made for a quarter or for a dollar. What else? That's a tough question, and they better not bother you with questions. They need to figure it out themselves. Oh, this one, you're pretty tough. Well, kids, that's it for the problem of the week, and that's the end of another Math Man and Decimal Dog show. This week, the program was brought to you by some kids that love math, Carrie Brady, Leila Santa Coleman, and Melody Scott. I also want to thank my production assistants, Melody Noel Aaron and Migo Priest. That's all until next week with Math Man and Decimal Dog.
Good morning, boys and girls. This is the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show, and we've got problems. Uh, what is it, decimal? Well, decimal, if you want to. Decimal has asked that for today we call this the Decimal Dog and Math Man Show. So, since decimal's my buddy, we're going to call it the Decimal Dog and Math Man Show, and a silent bark for that name. Decimal Dog has been asking me some questions that I want you boys and girls to help me answer. These are really important to Decimal Dog. He wants to know how many days until spring break. And he also wants to know how many days after spring break until the end of school. Because the big question that Decimal wants to know is how many days until school's out. Decimal wants to know it and the teachers want to know it, so boys and girls help us find the answer to those questions. We've got the problem of the week coming up, Decimal, if that's okay with you. But first, let's talk about mental math. Remember friendly numbers? I hope you've been practicing, practicing them. Today we're going to talk about trade-offs. That's a new trick, Decimal. No, 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 Decimal. Decimal, I'm not trading you any more of my baseball cards because you've taken all my star cards. I'm just not going to trade with you anymore. Decimal knows all the prices. He knows all of the things about baseball cards that are mathematical, and he just can trade better than me. We want to talk about trade-offs in mental math, Decimal. In trade-offs, kids, what you do is adjust the numbers to make the computation easier. For example, 9 plus 7, you would change the 9 to a 10 and go 10 plus 7 and then subtract 1 from the answer. Or here's a, a higher level, 534 minus 296, what you would do is 534 minus 300 and then add 4 to get the difference. These will make a lot more sense to you if you put them on the board and talk about them with your teacher. Plus, you need to try some of your own. Before we do the problem of the week, let's talk about the game. Decimal Dog and I hoped you liked red and blue, and we'd like for you to tell us if you thought of any variations. That means any different forms of that game. This week we have a game called Cyclops and Midgets. Now, wait a minute. I know what you're going to say, Decimal. I know what you're going to say. If you call me a Cyclops, I'm going to call you a Midget. So let's just stop right there. Kids, Cyclops and Midgets is a game that I think you'll like. It's a chase game. We'll have the directions in your teacher's mailboxes. Have fun with it. Let's do the problem of the week now, Decimal, and a silent bark for all the winners from last week. Congratulations. We hope you enjoyed your donuts. We want you to have fun with these, and especially this week, I think we've got some good ones. Let's get right to it. Decimal Dog, how about the third grade? Decimal's going to interpret that for me now. How many pages from 1 to 100 have a 3 in the number? Third graders, take note of that. How many pages from 1 to 100 have a 3 in the number? That's a good problem for the third graders. Have fun with it. Decimal, here's the problem for the fourth graders. Are you ready, fourth graders? Take notes. Not a whole lot to write, but pay attention. Get it down. In how many ways can you have 45 cents with five coins? One more time. In how many ways can you have 45 cents with five coins? And Decimal says, be sure and list all the ways. Right, Decimal? If, if you don't list all the ways, you can't get credit for having it right. Fifth graders coming up. Are you ready, Decimal? Here you go, fifth graders. Are you ready? I have the same number of quarters as dimes. The total value of the quarters is 90 cents more than the total value of the dimes. How much money do I have? Take notes, here it is one more time. I have the same 
number of quarters as dimes. The total value of the quarters is 90 cents more than the total value of the dimes. How much money do I have? Is that it, decimal? Fifth graders are finished. And we go to the sixth grade. Well, finally, the sixth graders get one that decimal has to really think about. It's a tough one, isn't it, decimal? Better work together on this, sixth graders. Take some notes. Let's have a decimal. There are three four, excuse me, there are three red, four green, and five blue marbles in the jar. If you were blindfolded, how many marbles would you have to take out of the jar to make sure you had two of the same color? Now this may be a good one that you can actually try. Even if you don't have marbles, you can come up with some adaptation for it. Here it is one more time. There are three red, four green, and five blue marbles in the jar. If you were blindfolded, how many marbles would you have to take out of the jar to make sure you had two of the same color? Sounds interesting, Decimal. I think the sixth graders will have fun with that. Now, Decimal and I would like for you to write to us if you have any questions or comments about the show. We've got the address right here. You can have your teacher or Mrs. Rule help you compose the letter. Send it to Math Man and Decimal Dog, Care of the Math Lab, third floor, Glenwood School. And it would be nice if you put this in an envelope and showed us how that you can make the correct address and return address. And uh, as you know, Decimal's very picky, so he would like to have the letter written in the correct format. Well, Decimal, is that all for the Decimal Dog and Math Man show? This is brought to you this week by Randy Pratt, Raheem Kareem, David Kenny, and Ricky Saunders. I want to thank all those of you who have helped us and watched the show. Tune in next week. That's it for the Decimal Dog and Math Man show. Oh, good morning, Glenwood. This is the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show. And in case you're wondering what Decimal Dog was telling me, he has some good news. He was telling me that he heard some kids in Glenwood are really good with mental math. And, well, we didn't get their names, or he didn't get their names, but they know who they are. And if you weren't the ones he's talking about, have some fun with numbers. Get good at mental math. You can use it all your life, and maybe Decimal Dog will be telling me about you next time. Have you been using the friendly numbers? Have you been using the trade-offs? Ask your teacher to give you problems. I mean math problems. Classroom teachers, keep a file of good mental math problems to, to give you your students. Decimal Dog will give you a big sigh and bark for that. Use it as a time filler. Maybe uh, give out a problem every so often uh, during the day to fill in uh, lapses of, of time or uh, when they're lining up for lunch, things like that. Kids and teachers, make up games with mental math problems. Use your imagination. Let Decimal Dog and I know how you do. We'd like to get some new ideas also. We've got a problem of the week coming up, Decimal. First, we want to talk about a new game. Now, last week was Cyclops and Midgets. Did you have fun with that? Did you even take time to look up what the word Cyclops means or why Midgets are the way they are in real life? That didn't have anything to do with the game, but that's two things you might want to know. It'll make you a better person. Learn all you can, not just about math. Which one did you like being, a Cyclops or a Midget? Which one had the advantage of winning the game if there was an advantage? Let us know. We have a new game this week, Decimal, and this is called Make It or Take It. Now, teachers, that's not what you think, so don't worry. Have fun with this game. Teachers, play it with your class. Make it or take it. That'll be in your box, Decimal. Will you put it in there for them?
Thank you, buddy. That's a good dog. Good dog. Let's do the problem of the week now. Let's start again with the third graders and then a silent bark for the winter before we get to the third graders. We know that uh, a lot of people are enjoying those donuts. I know we sure are, and we thank Miss Simon for getting them for us. It really makes the Math Man and Decimal Dog show a lot better. Decimal, here's the third grade problem. If you'll just interpret that for me, I would appreciate it. You have it? All right, Decimal, let's hear it. What is the number? It is less than 50. You say it when you count by twos. You say it when you count by threes. You say it when you count by fives. Did you take notes? If you didn't, get it this time. We're going to read it one more time. What is the number? It is less than 50. You say it when you count by twos. You say it when you count by threes. You say it when you count by fives. Can you get that number, third graders? Work together, have fun. Maybe make up some problems like this on your own. This is the one to go for the donuts with. Let's try the fourth graders. Have you got that decimal? Oh, you want to read it again. Okay, he wants to make sure he gets it right. And you know, that's a good idea when you're doing word problems. Don't go through them too fast. Read them twice, maybe three times. Make sure you understand the question. Don't get in a hurry with word problems, right, decimal? And a silent bark for everybody who takes their time when they're doing word problems. Here we go. What are the two numbers? The sum of two numbers is 20. Their difference is 14. You have that fourth graders? Here it is again. The sum of two numbers is 20. Their difference is 14. What are the two numbers? That's a good one. This one, you're doing really good with these problems of the week. You like to give people problems, don't you? Yes, in more ways than one, that's for sure. Well, we've got the fifth grade in the decimal. Go through that one carefully. And let's share it with the fifth graders. How about it? If it takes one second to write down each digit, about how many minutes would it take to write all the numbers one through 1,000? Now listen for key words in this one, kids. Here it is again, fifth graders. If it takes one second to write down each digit, about how many minutes would it take to write all the numbers from one through 1,000? Think they've got a decimal? Then let's go on to the sixth grade. Sixth graders. Decimal is going through your problem. Uh-oh, decimal. What is it? Oh, the problem's not that hard. There was just a picture of a dog on the card and you wanted to make sure you saw it. Must have been a girl dog. Well, can we share the problem with them? Here it is. My number is two times the sum of its digits. What is my number? Here it is, sixth graders. My number is two times the sum of its digits. What is my number? Well, that's all of the problems of the week. Don't forget your mental math. I want to say once again, have fun with it. Make up some for your teacher. Make your teacher do some mental math too. We all need practice. I know I need practice. And what is a decimal? What's wrong with my shirt? No, no, I'm not wearing this decimal because I think I'm Einstein. No, no, you're missing the point, decimal. Let me tell you, it says math teachers count. Uh, yes, I'm not the only math teacher in the world, decimal. Every teacher in Glenwood is a math teacher. That's right. And some of them 
may not be like me because I've had trouble with math, especially when I was in elementary school. Yes, yes, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Well, math teachers count because math teachers teach people like Einstein their math. He had to learn how to uh, add his basic facts and subtract and multiply and divide. And someone had to teach him. Someone not as smart as him, but someone who could help him with something he didn't know at the time. Maybe some of these kids will become math teachers, or even better, maybe some of them will become Einsteins. Well, Decimal Dog, we don't want to forget to thank our production assistants, Melody, Noel, Aaron, and Migo Priest. And we have this episode of Decimal Dog brought to you by a foursome in the fourth grade. Don't forget to look up foursome. Don't forget to look up what, who Einstein was. That's his picture right here. Here's the fearless foursome in the fourth grade. Jesus, Brandon, Charles, and Paul. This is the Math Man and Decimal Dog saying we'll see you till next uh, see you next week. Good morning, Glenwood Elementary. This is the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show once again. I'm the Math Man. This is my right arm decimal dog, and we've got some problems. We've got some problems we're going to share with you. I hope by now that you've come to realize that some problems are good, some problems are fun. We have fun with math problems, don't we, Decimal? St. Patrick's Day is coming up the 17th of March. So let's think about some math for St. Patrick's Day. Well, as you can see, I'm surrounded and covered with clovers because a decimal dog and I found a four-leaf clover in the clover patch, but we got in a little disagreement over who it belonged to. And uh, well, I think this speaks for itself. Uh, decimal, I, I apologize. I shouldn't have tried to grab that four-leaf clover from your hand. I just wasn't lucky. And you know, thanks for apologizing. Yes, yes, the bandage, the bandage took care of the blood decimal. I'm okay now. Let's get back to St. Patrick's Day math. Of course, you can do shapes. Try some uh, geometric shapes with clovers in your art classes. Come up with your own ideas, kids and teachers. I'm sure you can come up with ideas for them. Uh, let's do some plain old basic math with St. Patrick's Day themes. How many leaves on 400 three-leaf clovers and 500 four-leaf clovers? Think about that one. That's about how many decimal nines were up in the clover patch. Try this for real, teachers, when the weather's warm enough. Go outside and measure a square foot of ground somewhere where you can find some grass with clovers mixed in. Count the clovers in that square foot and then measure a larger distance, maybe the whole playground if you think you can do it, and try to come up with a reasonable estimate of how many clovers are in the total large area. Uh, let's see, make up some word problems about leprechauns. That would be good, wouldn't it? Uh, Maybe write a story about leprechauns and how they use magic numbers. A big sigh apart for that idea. Now use your correct punctuation, your correct paragraphs and sentence structure because there's more to, to life than mathematics. You want to be able to communicate and you want to be able to computate. Let's go on now with the show. How's your mental math? Have you been using friendly numbers? Have you been using trade-offs? We're going to learn a new trick today, Decimal. This is called breakdown. Uh, no, no, it's not my car. It's not my car. It hasn't broke down for a while, Decimal. I know you haven't forgiven me for that time when we had to walk all those miles. And, and I know we counted them all. We did some math while we were walking, but the car is okay now, Decimal. Breakdown in mental math is not exactly like trade-offs, think about it. You break down the numbers to make the computation easier. For example, 
Let me think of something here. 325 multiplied by 6 is 300 times 6 plus 6 times 25. So it's 1800 plus 150 or 1900. Now that's almost my birthday year decimal dog. Subtract 2 from 1950 and you get my birthday year. A little bit more math and you can figure out how old I am. Here's a couple more for you to think about. How do you do with a breakdown 23 plus 49 or 15% of $46. Put those down on the board. They'll make more sense to you when you can see them and make up some of your own. Now you know all the three tricks of mental math. Friendly numbers, trade-offs, and breakdowns. Three tricks, you'll be successful with mental math. Problem of the week is coming up. First, let's talk about our new game. This week's game is Poison. Don't worry, Decimal Dog, that's just the name of the game. We're still friends. When you get the directions, kids, play poison with a friend. Have fun with it. Problem of the week. Big style of bark for last week's winners. And let's get right to the third grade problem of the week. Decimal Dog decided to make some of these personal today. I don't know about this one. But let's see, this is the third grade. Are you ready out there, third graders? Pay close attention. Use your best listening skills. Decimal Dog is reading it carefully, and now he's ready to translate through me for you the sum of four page numbers that come one after another is 86. What are the page numbers? One more time. The sum of four page numbers that come one after another is 86. What are the page numbers? That's a good one for you third graders. Have fun with it. Work together. Fourth grade. Let's give it to him now, Decimal Dog. Well, this is one of the personal ones that he wants to share uh, about himself. Decimal Dog collects seashells. For every three seashells he collects, he keeps two and gives one to Math Man. Last week, Decimal Dog collected 48 seashells. How many of these seashells did he give to Math Man? Trying to tie up my tongue there, weren't you, Decimal Dog? Well, let's try it again, and I'll have to translate carefully. Decimal Dog collects seashells. For every three seashells he collects, he keeps two and gives one to Math Man. Last week, Decimal Dog collected 48 seashells. How many of these seashells did he give to Math Man? Now, that's a long one. But I'm sure you fourth graders can handle it, and Decimal Dog believes you can also. Here's another one. This is the fifth graders. Get ready to take notes. And he says this is another personal one. Decimal Dog has three times as many stamps as Math Man. If Math Man had eight more stamps, they would have the same number of stamps. How many stamps? does Decimal Dog have? Well, that's a tricky one. Good, good one. Let's do it again. Decimal Dog has three times as many stamps as Math Man. If Math Man had eight more stamps, they would have the same number of stamps. How many stamps does Decimal Dog have? And I want to know, have you been using my stamps? Okay, let's go on to the sixth grade. Are we ever going to challenge these sixth graders? They think these things are too easy. Well, maybe we can do it today. Sixth graders, get ready. Decimal Dog says he has a personal one for you. It's about his brother and sister. 
My brother is half as old as I am. My sister is twice as old as I am. The son of our ages is 35. How old am I? Now that may be the one that stumps the sixth grade decimal. Let's give it to him again. Let's go slowly. My brother is half as old as I am. My sister is twice as old as I am. The sum of our ages is 35. How old am I? That's Decimal Dog and his brother and sisters. We've had some personal math problems of the week this week. And Decimal Dog and I would like to suggest to you that you make up some word problems of your own about things in your life, about sports, about singing groups, about things that you're interested in. TV shows, cartoons, make up some math word problems and share them with your friends to solve. This is another episode of Math Man and Decimal Dog. I want to thank our production assistants once again, Melody, Noel, Aaron, and Migo Priest. This week, we're brought to you by some more kids that love math. The trio from the third grade, find out what trio means. Risa. Leticia and Paul. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Good morning, Glenwood. This is the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show. And I'm the math man. This is my right arm decimal dog. And we're in a good mood today. That's why we've got all of these streamers, because today's a special day. We're going to tell you about it in just a moment. First of all, I want to ask you a question. Are you keeping up the mental math? Exercise your brain. Doing mental math is like lifting weights with your brain. You exercise it, it gets stronger. No, I'm not going to call them muscle heads, decimal dog. I was just trying to make a point about how good it is to exercise your brain. You'll be healthier that way, mentally. Don't forget, use the friendly numbers. Use trade-offs. Use breakdowns to help you with the mental math tricks. Don't forget the magic number 10. Magic number 10. Classroom teachers, keep it up. Keep mental math on your mind working with your students. Kids, quiz your friends. Quiz your parents. Have fun with mental math. Make some contests. Let us know how you do. Now, here's why Decimal Dog and I are all decorated with these streamers. And Decimal, you did a good job with the streamers in the background. Today, March 19th, 1990, and by the way, you can write that in a math sentence as 3 Day, March 19, 1990 at 419 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time we begin spring and that's why we sir we are so happy because we love spring decimal dog starts thinking about little girl dogs and I start thinking about baseball baseball is full of math full of statistics as a matter of fact when I was in elementary school right over there at Tiscawall I learned how to do decimal division because I wanted to figure out my batting average. How did I learn it when my batting average was so low? Now you don't know what my batting average was, decimal dog. As a matter of fact, at that point in my life, I had a pretty good batting average. Now my batting average is about equal to my age, decimal dog. But back then, that's how I learned to do decimal division. And as a matter of fact, I don't remember the teacher showing me. This was even before we got to decimal division. It was because I wanted to do baseball statistics. But there's other things to do in spring with math besides baseball. Try some math with temperatures or the length of daylight. Teachers, plan on going outdoor for a math, uh, outdoors for a math class. You can ask the decimal dog and I for some ideas and anyone that does that gets a big sigh of bark from decimal dog we've got the problem of the week coming up but first a new game this week's game is called totito 
the Tito. It's a game from South America. I think you'll have fun with it. Teachers, you'll find it in your box. And do some math with, do some map math. You, for example, you can do South America. Find the latitude and longitude of South America, uh, the distance from Charleston, West Virginia, the altitude of a major city, the population of uh, a major city. Compare some populations, all kinds of map mathematics, all kinds of mathematics with South America. And that's where our game comes from. Let's do the problems of the week, Decimal Dog. That's what we're here for. Big Sal and Bart for last week's winners. And a big Sal and Bart for everybody who ate the donuts and chewed with their mouth closed. Decimal Dog and I have been working on that because he's had, had some problems with chewing with his mouth open. But let's get right to the problems of the week. First, the third graders. The decimal dog have a chance to look at it slowly and carefully like you should always do thinking problems. Now decimal dog, let's share it with the third graders. Are you ready out there third graders? Here it is. A bank needs pennies. It decides to trade a one dollar bill for every 98 pennies a person brings in. How much would you gain by bringing in 500 pennies. Listen carefully or read it again. A bank needs pennies. It decides to trade a one dollar bill for every 98 pennies a person brings in. How much would you gain by bringing in 500 pennies? Third graders, that's yours. Good luck. Let's get out the fourth grade decimal. Help me turn it around there. You're a good right arm. Take a look at that one, Decimal. Are you ready? Did you take time to look for keywords? All right, let's go. Mrs. Perry noticed that the number on her odometer read the same forwards as backwards. How many numbers like this are there between 100 and 1,000? Let's do it again, fourth graders. Mrs. Perry Notice that the number on her odometer read the same forwards as backwards. How many numbers like this are there between 100 and 1,000? And you have to list all the numbers. Don't just write down how many numbers there are. Good luck, fourth graders, fifth graders. Decimal dogs looking over your problem of the week slowly and carefully, and I think he's ready. Fifth graders, are you ready? How many ping pong games will there be in a tournament for 16 players if each player plays until he loses or until one player is left? Let's do it again, Decimal Dog, and let's give him a hint this time. Listen carefully, fifth graders. How many ping pong games Will there be in a tournament for 16 players if each player plays until he loses or until one player is left? Now here's your hint. Make X's for players and try a tree diagram. Make X's for players and try a tree diagram. Fifth graders, good luck with your problem. Sixth graders, here's yours. What do you think about those sixth graders, Decimal Dog? They're pretty good kids. Okay, you want to tell me about their problem? What was that, Decimal Dog? You're not making fun of those sixth graders again, are you? All right, some of those sixth graders are almost as big as I am. Yeah, you better think about it. I'm pretty sorry if you did anything. Okay, let's go with the sixth grade problem. The difference between two numbers is 10, and their product is 3,000. What are the two numbers? Sixth graders, here it is again. The difference between two numbers is 10, and their product is 3,000. What are the two numbers? Sixth graders, good luck with your problem. That's the problems of the week for the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show. This week, 
some kids that love math have brought to you and sponsored this show. We have Candace, April, Shannon, and Marlena. And Decimal Dog and I say, well, he wants to say something before we say goodbye. He's saying you can take streamers, estimate the length of a streamer stretched out, then measure it in centimeters or inches, or maybe even larger units of measurement if the streamer is long enough, and see who comes closest to measuring the length. Good idea, Decimal Dog. Good idea. Give yourself a silent bark. Good morning, Glenwood Elementary School. Decimal Dog really likes that theme song. And I'm the math man, this is Decimal Dog, and we've got problems. We're going to share them with you. This is our eighth show. Our eighth show. Can you spell eight? How about eight? The number eight, not Decimal Dog ate a dozen donuts. Uh, he knows I'm just kidding. We planned that before the show come on. Think about your spelling. Spell all the number words. Are you keeping up your mental math? Give me a problem when you see me. Try to stump me, but it should be one that you can do. Problem of the week is coming up. First, let's talk about this week's game. It's a tough one. It's called points and lines. Don't give up on it. Try to figure it out. Play it. Maybe come up with some variations of your own. Maybe use it to make up a game of your own. Have fun with it. Points and lines. Well, we've had a lot of donuts this year, and we really enjoyed them. Added some mass to a lot of people around here. Now, we've had fun doing it, I hope. Why don't you try to think of some donut problems this week? You can do things with dozens and parts of dozens and even a gross of donuts. Now, I wasn't calling you gross decimal dog. I was talking about a, a, a number, uh, an amount of 12 dozen, which is a gross. 12 twelve. We'll let the kids figure out how many is in a, in a gross of donuts. You can go with weight. Weigh a donut or more than a donut. Do some, do some math with weight in grams or ounces. How about the diameter or the circumference or even the radius for you higher grades? Make up some word problems about donuts. Use recipes and calories. Be creative. Do some things with donut holes in mathematics. How about some poetry? Donuts, math, and poetry. That sounds like it'd be a lot of fun to me and I'd like to hear what you write. Let's go on with the problem of the week now, Decimal Dog. Start out with the third grade as usual. Third graders, listen carefully. Listen carefully. Because this one has more to it than you've had before. Ready to take some notes, and Decimal Dog? Tell us exactly what it says. Jeff has five more baseball cards than Jack. Jack has three more baseball cards than Sid. Sid has eight baseball cards. How many baseball cards does Jeff have? Now we'd like for you to write that in a number sentence. Listen to it one more time. Jeff has five more baseball cards than Jack. Jack has three more baseball cards than Sid. Sid has eight baseball cards. How many baseball cards does Jeff have? Now what we mean by a number sentence is, show us your equation or equations, just don't give us a number. Third graders, if you have any questions, the teacher will be glad to help you. Fourth graders, here is yours. Listen carefully as soon as Decimal Dog analyzes it. He's going to give it to you, and I think he's ready. How many numbers are there whose digits sum to four? Make a list of them 
don't use zeros. Ready, fourth graders? How many numbers are there whose digits sum to four? Make a list of them. Don't use zeros. Fourth graders, that's your problem of the week. Let's go on to the fifth grade now. Fifth graders, Decimal Dog wants you to be careful and listen carefully with this one. This is not a real easy one. Laura and Mandy were trading baseball cards. Laura said that three Mark McGuire's equal one Don Mattingly, and that one Don Mattingly equals five Corey Snyders. How many Mark McGuire's would Lara trade for 15 Corey Snyders? Now, listen carefully. I almost got a little bit mixed up on that. That's a good point. Teachers, even Mr. Mathman can get mixed up a little bit. Listen carefully, take some notes, and we're ready to go with the fifth grade. Lara and Mandy were trading baseball cards. Lara said that three Mark McGuire's equal one Don Mattingly, and that one Don Mattingly equals five Corey Snyders. How many Mark McGuire's would Lara trade for 15 Corey Snyders? That's a good one, fifth graders. Be careful. Let's go on to the sixth grade one. You know Decimal Dog has had a lot of fun with the sixth graders. It won't be long until those sixth graders will be seventh graders. So I think he looked up a special problem for you on this episode. Listen carefully, sixth graders, take some notes. Jack, Susan, and Carla went strawberry picking. Jack ate some strawberries. Susan ate four fewer strawberries than Jack. Carla ate five more strawberries than Susan. Carla ate eight strawberries. How many strawberries did Jack eat? And there was the uh, words eight and eight in there, spelled two different ways. Listen carefully, we'll go through it again. Jack, Susan, and Carla went strawberry picking. Jack ate some strawberries. Susan ate four fewer strawberries than Jack. Carla ate five more strawberries than Susan. Carla ate eight strawberries. How many strawberries did Jack eat? And we want you to show your equation or your equations also, sixth graders. And don't strain your brains too much. Well, Decimal Dog, that's all the problem of the week questions. We want to take this time to thank some people especially that have helped us out. Mrs. Cottell with the audiovisual equipment. We appreciate her loaning that to us and giving us some advice on how to use it. We want to thank the Chapter 1 program for all the materials they have provided for math at Glenwood. We want to thank the staff for their compliments and uh, suggestions and patience with us as we learned how to do things. This week of Math Man and Decimal Dog is brought to you by some kids in Glenwood Elementary that love math. They're five from the fifth. Chris, Brandon, Kenya, Reggie, and Charles. And for the eighth time, this is Math Man and Decimal Dog saying goodbye. Hello Glenwood, this is the Math Man Decimal Dog Show. Well, I've got to tell you something, Decimal Dog's on strike. He said he's, he's tired of doing these shows. He said the pay's not high enough, and you know something? Since I know a little bit about math, I agree with him. The pay is not high enough. So I'm leaving too. I've had it, that's all.
Well, we tricked you. I know we're a day late, but April Fool, April Fool. We're a little late, but April Fool, we got you. We weren't on strike, we still like math. A big silent bark to everybody out there that got tricked. You know you can have fun doing math. It's kind of hard to talk with this big nose. You can have fun doing math. But look at me like that, you ought to see yourself. For this week's math, why don't you make up some math jokes? Make them funny, share them with your friends and share them with Decimal Dog and myself. We got the problem of the week coming up. The first, the game of the week. This week, the game goes with the theme. It's the take-home version of Don't Lose Your Marbles. Now, I lost all my marbles in elementary school. Uh, decimal dog. Well, let's go on with the problems of the week. Let me adjust this thing a little bit. We want to make sure they understand their problems because these are some serious problems and uh, the donuts are still going to be awarded to the winner. Third graders, get ready. As soon as decimal dog is ready, we'll give you a problem. The sum of our two ages is 18. I'm two years younger than he is. How old are we? Now you don't have to think about that's me or decimal dog, it's just two people, could be anybody. Listen carefully, take down some notes, third graders. The sum of our two ages is 18. I'm two years younger than he is. How old are we? Third graders, have you got that? Do your best with it. Fourth grade. Looks like you've got a good one. I can almost read some of this dog language. I bought a bag of apples. I kept half of them for myself. I gave the rest to three friends. Each friend got two apples. How many apples did I buy? Take notes, fourth graders. Here it is again. I bought a bag of apples. I kept half of them for myself. I gave the rest to three friends. Each friend got two apples. How many apples did I buy? Got that, fourth graders? Figure it out. Let's get the fifth grade question out here now. Take a look at it through those Hollywood glasses of yours, Decimal Dog. I'll smell of it through this nice nose. It smells good to me. Now you tell me what it says. Jean has twice as many dimes as nickels. Together she has $2.75. How many dimes does she have? One more time, fifth graders. Jean has twice as many dimes as nickels. Together she has $2.75. How many dimes does she have? Fifth graders, go for it. Have fun with it. Now for you sixth graders. Are we ready, Decimal Dog? Uh, Decimal Dog's telling me something. He's saying sixth graders have so much trouble anyway. I better take off this nose so they can understand me. All right, sixth graders, you won't have any excuses. Here it comes. What's the number? It is greater than one less than a cube of six, a multiple of three, a multiple of five, the sum of two of its digits is equal to the third digit. Now take some notes. It's not really that hard for you bright sixth graders. What's the number? It is greater than one, less than a cube of six, a multiple of three, a multiple of five, the sum of its digits is equal to the third digit. Well, that's a good problem for the sixth graders, and I bet they have a lot of fun with that. Let's see what else we want to do on this show. Let me think. Well, Decimal Dog, we have a special dedication today this uh, April Fool's show. We want to dedicate this to some special people 
that love math. Give them a big sigh and bark. Let's name those people now. They go right with this show. Miss Harris, Mrs. Kolb, Mrs. Kirk, Mrs. Godfrey, Mrs. DeVita, Miss Lawson, Miss Watson, and last but not least, Miss Simon. Thank you for the April Fool's edition of Math Man and Decimal Dog, and we'll see you next week. Hello everyone at Glenwood Elementary that loves math. All the students, all the faculty, all the staff members. Hello, this is the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show. And this is our last show of the season. Decimal Dog and I got all dressed up in our Sunday go to meeting clothes just for you. Decimal Dog wants to show off his bow tie that he bought at the Town Center Mall. Good choice, Decimal Dog. My suit is a math suit. Let's look at some things that are mathematical about my suit. First of all, you're, you're thinking about the size, and that's true. As a matter of fact, this vest was too small because of all the donuts I've been eating. So we had to uh, get this, the vest adjusted. We had to take a measurement and adjust it to a larger size. Of course, there's the price of this suit. In my case, I bought it on credit, so I have to pay more than the normal price. I have to pay interest. So there's a money, there's percentage, there are, there's decimals all in the price of this suit. That takes me longer to put the suit on than it does the things that I normally wear. So there's dress time comparisons. And there's geometry on this suit. If you look carefully, as Decimal Dog traces with his nose, you'll see parallel lines. Lines that are very similar to railroad tracks. And we have an angle up here. If you look carefully there, you'll see an acute angle. What is a decimal? No, no decimal. I did not say that I'm cute. I said that is an acute angle. An acute angle is less than 90 degrees, but that's for another show. Let's get back to the subject. Decimal Dog and I want to remind you, and, and decimal is behind me 100% on this. Stick with your mental math. Keep doing it. Keep practicing it. Use your friendly numbers, use your trade-offs, work with your breakdowns, and if you get any other ideas of how to do mental math, share them with Decimal Dog and I. We're very interested in hearing. Try things with your parents. Classroom teachers, keep doing mental math throughout the day with your classroom. Kids, whenever you get a chance, make up a problem for your friends. Have fun with it. And all of you, when you do mental math in real life, let Decimal Dog and I know how, how you do it. It's okay to do it for practice with things you make up, but when you have to do it in real life, we'd like to hear about it. Classroom teachers, let your class know how you use mental math sometimes, perhaps, perhaps with your register or, or with your paycheck or something like that. Let them know because it's a real life skill. Easter's coming up April the 15th, and Decimal Dog and I, of course, are dressed up for this final show, but it's also our Easter outfits, and Decimal Dog wanted to pose with his girlfriend, the Bunny Rabbit Sunshine, for his Easter portrait. So there you are, Decimal. Are you ready to go? Well, I'll make it as quick as I can. He's in a hurry to go out and play with Sunshine. There's lots of mathematics in Easter. Of course, you can count the candy that you get in your Easter basket, or you can do things a little more advanced. You can sort the candy by size or by type of candy, by color, things like that, and then make a graph. Try some advanced math with your Easter basket. Teachers, here's an idea of something you might do with a display of place value, this egg represent a decimal point. This rabbit, the dollar's place. This rabbit, 
the ten dollars place. Coming back across the decimal point, here we have the dimes place and the pennies place. That's just an idea to get you thinking. And teachers, we'd like to know if you come up with any ideas of your own on how to use mathematics at Easter time. We've got the problem of the week coming up and another game, but before that we want to tell you about something new. Notice the Easter basket here. That's my dog. Help me with that. Wow, he is a strong dog to pick that up. This little dog is showing you an Easter basket and he didn't leave any teeth marks. Very good, decimal dog. This Easter basket will be on display somewhere in the school, probably near the office. We'll let you know either over the intercom or with a, a message in your teacher's mailboxes. And you can guess how many eggs, in other words, in other words, estimate how many eggs are in this Easter basket. You can win this prize by yourself. This isn't a classroom prize, and we may even let the first graders and second graders in on this. The first guess that we draw that has the right answer wins a prize all by himself or herself. And we'll let you know what the prize is as soon as Decimal Dog and I find out ourselves. We'll let you know the details. Look forward to that and have fun with it. Now we want to tell you about the last game of the series. This is called Galaxy Grid. If you know how to play Battleship like Decimal Dog does, you'll be okay on Galaxy Grid. You can do some real advanced math with Galaxy Grid, but for now just have some fun with it and get familiar with it. You were already doing gridding when you played Battleship, so you can, you can learn this game and have fun with it. Decimal, let's do the last problem of the week for the year. A big silent bark for the winners of last week's donut party. I want to wish everyone good luck with these. Third graders, you're first. Pay attention. Decimal dog is reading slowly and carefully. He's looking for key words. He's making sure he understands the question. He's getting the data he needs. And now we're going to share the question with you. Pay attention. Take notes. There are six children and two adults at each table. There are a total of 30 children. How many tables are there? What is the total number of adults? You may want to draw a picture for this one, third graders. Remember, there's two questions to answer and we'd like to see your work. Here it is again. There are six children and two adults at each table. There are a total of 30 children. How many tables are there? What is the total number of adults? Have fun with that one, third graders. Fourth graders, get ready for yours. I believe we have the wrong one decimal. Let's get the fourth graders. Okay, fourth graders. How many more three-digit numbers are there than two-digit numbers? Have fun with that one. We're going to read it one more time. How many more three-digit numbers are there than two-digit numbers? Now, there should be an equation with this one. It's not as long as you think it is. It may take a little while to solve it. There's not a lot of computation. Have fun with the fourth graders. Fifth graders. Looks like there's a lot of doggy words on yours. Just like with the third graders, you need to understand the question, get the needed data, look for key words, and decide what to do. Of course, some of these things we give you aren't all add, subtract, multiply, and divide problems. Some of them you have to think and reason and do other things. Fifth graders, here's yours. The Harper family was on a trip. At 3.59 p.m., Mr. Harper noticed that the odometer showed 380 miles. If they travel 55 miles an hour, what time will it be when the odometer shows 600 miles? Be ready, fifth graders, take some notes. The Harper family was on a trip. At 3.59 p.m., Mr. Harper noticed that the odometer showed 380 miles. If they travel 55 miles each hour, what time will it be when the odometer shows 600 miles? Show us any work you do, fifth graders, and have fun with that one. Now, sixth graders, 
Decimal Dog and I got together and we decided to come up with one to stump you for the very last program. Now the reason we're doing this is because Decimal Dog and I don't want you to go to the seventh grade with a big head that won't fit through the doors of the junior high you go to. So we're going to do our best to humble you by getting you to miss a problem that is so simple that it's hard. Decimal review what we got and let's share it with them. Sixth graders, pay attention. Marine paid $2.30 for a notebook and a pencil. The notebook cost $2 more than the pencil. How much did the pencil cost? Pretty good question, Decimal Dog. Let's give it to them one more time. Marine paid $2.30 for a notebook and a pencil. The notebook cost $2 more than the pencil. How much did the pencil cost? Good luck with that one, sixth graders. Don't get mad at us. We did it for your own good. Before we tell you the students who love math, uh, brought to you this episode of the Math Man Decimal Dog Show, we want to thank the uh, production staff here in the studios for all the help that they've given us. We want to thank the staff members for your patience and suggestions and everything else you've done to help us. I want to thank everyone who's helped with the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show. I want to wish all of you to have a good time in math. Kids, set a goal of getting an A in math. And come by and show Decimal Dog and I your report card. This episode of the Math Man and Decimal Dog Show has been brought to you by three sixth grade boys and one sixth grade girl that love math. The boys are Adrian, Sean, and Stuart. And the girl is Dana Math. That's our nickname for her. She knows who she is. Decimal Dog and I say, have fun with mathematics. Don't quit just because the show is over. Don't quit when school is over. If you're going to use math all your life, keep at it. Have fun.